speed wins races. No matter what way you look at it, fastest athlete wins a race. If you don't race, and you're watching today's video, that doesn't mean that working on your speed won't help you. You can run faster personal bests. Everybody loves running the personal best. Why speed is so important is because the faster that you can run in terms of 100% speed, well, of course, the faster each distance above that will get. So the speed that you can run 100 meters, believe it or not, is directly correlated to the speed you'll run a marathon. Let's get into it. All right, so I'm just walking to the track. Today was actually a threshold day this morning, so we did a eight mile threshold. I'll tell you a little bit about that. I've done videos on threshold already. So today is actually, well, interesting story. Katie wants me to do a YouTube video on how to shave a beard. Yes, get rid of the beard. So maybe we can vote in the comments. Shave means obviously shave it, keep, I'll keep it. So today's video is gonna be broken down into why you might wanna work on your speed, what you might wanna do to work on your speed, just like I'm doing today, when that would fit into your training week, and you know how that might look. Do you do it on an easy day? Do you do it on a hard day? Is it a day in itself? Then the exactly what to do and what not to do in terms of let's not get injured trying to do some speed. And so that means I'm gonna cover a bit of a start doing this around your speed so that you don't get injured. That's the most important part. But I'm gonna go through all of that while I do some speed drills on the track so you can get to know some of these speed drills, some activation stuff which helps sort of prevent injuries, a warm up jog, and then some sprints of my own. And we're gonna combine all of this so that when you finish watching this video, you can enjoy the beautiful flag staff, enjoy me trying to run fast, but then also know how you could start working on your own speed. Okay, so let's look at why you might wanna start working on speed. I think I covered a little bit, but speed is, running is a byproduct of, of speed. Race result is a byproduct of speed. If you can run, for example, 100 meters in 20 seconds, well, it's likely that if that's you running as fast as you can, well, then it's gonna be difficult to run a 400 meter in 80 seconds. That's four times 20. Then if you move up to 5K or 10K, well, then it becomes extremely difficult to hold 20 seconds per 100 meter for those distances. So it's why it's so important to incorporate speed into what you're doing. The quicker that you can start to run some of these shorter distances, sprints, races, 5Ks, 10Ks, of course it seems logical that you're gonna be able to run faster for some of the longer races. That's why improve your 100 meter time and your 5k 10k half marathon marathon time will improve well what i'm doing today is i did an eight mile threshold this morning i did that with jack i'm using a harder day and just keeping the hard day hard but what you can do is if you're new to speed work let's call it you could do it if you've done a very easy thresholdy type session in the morning you could do it right after that session. That means that when you finish the session, you could take a four to five minute jog, and then you could do something like three or four, start easy, and just work your way into almost strides. By the third and fourth one, you can pretty much go as fast as you can. You might wanna start with doing it uphill because that removes some of the pounding, but don't go crazy with it make sure you're doing a thorough warm-up. Make sure your muscles are warm, make sure your body's well stretched, do some of the activation stuff, do some of the drills that I'm showing you, get the muscles firing, especially those muscles that you know break down when you're working hard. Don't neglect that or you'll get injured, it's so important. For me, it's my adductors, my hip flexors and calves. So a lot of my drills and activation routine, it's centered around getting those muscles 
in a good place so I don't get injured. There's no point being faster, but being hurt, senseless. So be very sensible with it. If you need more, like a full warm up routine, activation routine, some gym stuff, check out joggingroom.com. Plenty of stuff on there, free stuff that might build a layer of robustness around your body before you start doing the speed stuff. Okay, so even though I tapped into the when briefly, let's take a deeper dive into it. A lot of people believe in keeping those hard days hard. That means a lot of people do gym on their harder day. So if they do intervals in the morning, hills, tempo, they do their gym later that afternoon. They keep those hard days hard so that the easy days are exactly what they're supposed to be. Easy recovery. So you could build your speed right after your tempo intervals, etc., or you could do it later that afternoon if time permits. Just make sure if you're doing it in the afternoon that you still include some form of warm up routine so that you don't get hurt by going and practicing speed in the afternoon but not doing your warm up routine. Another suggestion would be if you're new to running and you're new to like any time any type of sorry like sprint training or speed training do this session as a one off get rid of a tempo day get rid of a steady run day and just do speed that will help your overall running your overall performances a lot more than one extra tempo remember that speed is what wins races Limiting speed is what's gonna limit your potential over 5K, 10K, half marathon. If you're limited at 100 meter, then you're limited at 5K, 10K, half marathon, marathon. Okay, so word of caution, and I'm not gonna go on about this, and I'm not gonna be like a, I don't know, like one of those like overprotective coaches or, but please be careful. That's why when you're doing speed work and you're gonna look speed kills there's no doubt about it every time i wake up the next day and i've done some speed work things hurt i literally have to plan in yoga home mobility gym stuff for a couple of weeks before i even start speed work because if ever it's going to expose the little parts of your body that break down running well speeds it if you already get shin splints or knee pain just from running, well then you're gonna have to build in some of this yoga stuff, some of this home mobility, some of this home gym before you get stuck into speed. That's why you have to do a good warm up, some of the TheraBand stuff, some of the hip control stuff. If you get shin problems or calf problems, foam roll, get those areas nice and call it like loose before you even start because Otherwise, if they're fucking tight before you start, well, they're just gonna get tighter and tighter. Everybody wants to be better at running, but nobody wants to pay the price. The price is the fucking tedious, bullshitty type stuff that none of us want to do. The foam rolling, the stretching, the yoga, the recovery stuff, the self-massage, the good nutrition, the good hydration. Nobody wants to do it because it sucks. It's better to just go run. Don't forget to do that stuff too. That's what's really gonna help. That's what's gonna help you stay healthy. And if you can stay healthy and you can practice this speed work on a weekly basis, it's gonna get better. Remember the first time you go do it that it's not the last opportunity that you're allowed to do it. So you don't need to be your fastest on week one. The recovery stuff, the gym stuff, the nutrition stuff, check out the website, check out joggingroom.com. It's brilliant. Not a single person has said it sucks, so it must be all right. Check it out. But I'll finish off some of these drills and do my own session, but please be careful. That's my word of caution, but be sensible with this stuff. Okay, so whew, drills and strides, done. Done and dusted. Probably gonna be sore tomorrow. I got involved with, this is a don't do this. I got involved with doing strides with Jack, who I've kind of been skiving strides and sprints, and Jack has literally done them every Thursday for, yeah, probably the last two months. So well done, Jack, who also just ran a 1320 PB for 5K. Well done, Jack. But what I did was I did some strides myself first, two to three, 
to kind of extend the warm up. Then we might have done four times 200s with a 200 jog and about 27 to 28. <sighs> Honestly, I feel pretty spoiled that I was able to do that. I hope my body doesn't ache tomorrow, but please tread carefully. Start to include this. Your body's gonna appreciate it once it gets used to it. I would recommend doing it uphill first, and that's probably why I was able to run 27, 28, because I've still been doing those hill sprints. I've still been working really hard, and they help. It just shows you that running super fast uphill, it's almost the same. You don't need to always do it on the flat, so don't worry about that. You've seen some of the hill stuff before. I've been sprinting up these hills. It might not be no 27 or 28, it's a lot slower, but it's the same muscles, it's the same sort of running form if you pick the right hill. So that's a, a big suggestion. Go check out the website, joggingroom.com. I imagine you wanna get better at running, I imagine you love running. It would really help support what I do. Enjoy your running, <laughs> running's hard. And I can keep doing these videos and I, I just want people to start enjoying running a bit more, learning more about how to be better, to, help you be better, but being faster, being better, it's no good if you're not enjoying it. So give yourself a pat on the back, maybe give yourself a little hug, go look yourself in the mirror, tell you you're proud of yourself, and just don't beat yourself up as much if it's not going the way you want it to. I might look like I'm amazing on this bloody YouTube and I don't know, a fucking six pack and all this kind of shit, but I still really struggle. I still find running really hard Running, I've been doing for 15 to 20 years, a lot of my life, this is really hard. Don't be so hard on yourself, please. Keep chipping away at it. There's a brilliant quote and it's like the stone chipper that just chips and chips and chips and then that final blow, boom, the stone breaks into a million pieces. So many people give up before that final little stone chipper or hit of the fucking hammer on the rock, I don't know. Be good to yourself, be kind to yourself, stop beating yourself up, well done. Check out the website if you want to and have a great day.